In today's session, this panel is called On the Ground Doing Business in China. We're very honored to have three excellent speaker and businessmen. Uh, Ronnie Chen, he is the chairman of Hung Long Group, and Wilbert Ross Jr., chairman and CEO is W.L. Ross and Company, LLC, and Andy Solom is the CEO and president of General Electric Infrastructure China. And if you want to read up a little bit more about each of them, and you can go to our program book, it gives you a very detailed description of who they are. Uh, what I'd like to do is, instead of, of reading from their bio, I would, want to just describe this group, this, the group of three, in, in, on a, in a collective fashion. I think if you look at them, the three of them represent a group of very, very seasoned China investors. They are, they are demonstrating the commitment to China both in terms of time, effort, and, and, and dollar. They are, it, it's also interesting to note that they are in some way involved in the infrastructure building in China. With Ronnie starting going to China very early doing, doing, doing real estate development back in the early 90s, with Wilbert investing in China in, in the steel and, and, uh, and textile industry, and with Andy, uh, being helping developing the, the transportation, the energy market in China for GE. So they are all involved in some kind of infrastructure. It will be very interesting to learn from their experience to see which way they, they think the market is changing. And you, we can always say that what they are doing can provide a leading indicator for what the rest of the China economy is going to be doing. And I think without much ado, what I would like to do is, uh, is go ahead and bring Wilbert up first. Uh, Wilbert would want to share with us some of his observation about China's economy as a whole, and then he's going to draw out some of his the, the less, lesson that, that, that he learns from, from his investment in China. Wilbert. Thank you. That's the first time I've ever been presented as part of a group, <laughs> as opposed to an individual. So I'll try to hold up my end of it. Um, you're all very familiar with China and macro statistics, so I won't go into them in great detail, but I did think that a little bit of positioning might be useful, just to give perspective. Last year, there was a bid over $60 billion of foreign direct investment into China, only slightly exceeded by 2005, and my guess is it'll be another $60 billion or more this year. So there's certainly no question that the appetite of foreigners for activity in China is growing very rapidly. China's foreign exchange reserves, as you know, have become legendary. They've more than quadrupled from 2002, when they were only about 300 billion, to now 1 trillion 200 billion. So you have the odd thing of a lot of equity money coming into China from abroad, especially from the United States, and then Chinese government is turning around and becoming a very major lender to the American government. As a percentage of GDP, uh, foreign direct investment in China is not a worrisome thing. It's really only around 2.5% of the total economy. And of course, as you know, the GDP has been growing at a spectacular rate around the parameters of 9 or 10%. Uh, per year. But perhaps more interesting than that is the comparison of growth between the Chinese economy and the U.S. economy. And as you can see, the U.S. economy itself has been growing some and is obviously still quite a bit bigger than China, but it certainly is not capable of matching in percentage terms uh, China's. What's also starting to happen is that there's getting to be great changes in the gross domestic product per capita within China. You see we're in Beijing. It's now a bit over 6,000 US dollars uh, per capita, whereas China overall is down around the 2,000 level. Shanghai is a bit over 7,000, and Guangzhou uh, which is an earlier place where development had started first coming over from Hong Kong, is up almost at $8,000. That has profound implications for the consumer 
markets that are finally really beginning to develop in China. And that's important because the mix of the Chinese economy is vastly different from the mix of the U.S. economy. As you can see, industry accounts for almost half of the total output, the total gross domestic product of China, whereas in the United States, industry is only about 20 percent. What's going to gradually start to happen, I believe, is that as you have the uh, consumer having more and more money, and anecdotally, there were 35 private jets bought by individual Chinese citizens last year, 35 private jets, which probably astounds many people. Even more interestingly, there were 327,000 millionaires in China last year. So you're starting to get some real population developing uh, with some real uh, resources. And so I believe the new engine that will continue to drive China's economy is not just the traditional things like steel production that's been growing fast, but will instead now become consumer. Consumer, it represents only about a third as much of an impact on the Chinese economy as in the U.S. Seventy percent of our economy is consumer driven. Why will it go up? Well, here's an interesting statistic. In the United States, we now have three cars for every four people of driving age. So basically a car for everybody who's of driving age. India only has six cars per thousand people of driving age. In China, despite what we all know are some terrible traffic problems in, in Shanghai and in Beijing and in some other cities, only has eight cars per thousand people of driving age. So when you talk about infrastructure, as was mentioned before, even though China has done a vastly superior job to India and most other countries in terms of keeping up with infrastructure, it's clear that just to accommodate the, the car needs of the population, there's a huge amount more of infrastructure uh, that will be needed. And indeed, an interesting fact is that a 1% further penetration by cars of the combined markets of China and India, just 1%, would equal the total output of cars in the United States. So it shows you the difference in scale. But one of the things that fascinates me about China is that any percentage, even a small percentage of anything, is a very, very big number in China. So. People complain sometimes that the statistics are off by this and that. To me, the scale of them is so staggering that it really doesn't make any difference. So here you see the comparison of driving age population. You've got 981 million people of driving age in China versus 233 million people of driving age in the United States. So approximately four times as many people, and when you combine that vast arithmetic relationship with the lack of penetration, you can see why everybody gets very excited uh, about the consumer uh, sector. So I hope that those few uh, flutterings of slides will help position some of the rest of the remarks that people will make. Thank you.